Warning, you may see some unsafe practices and safety precautions being ignored. Make sure you always read and understand all safety guidelines that came with your tools. In other words, do not try this at home. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Rapache Project. I am Terrence King, also known as King Raw 3 d and I am far from finished, uh, especially with this project right here. Today I'm going to be working on the x-axis. This is the uh, x-axis that is available in the RipRap Pro Mendel, uh, the Mono Mendel or the Tricolor Mendel. And I'm continuing modifying this 3D printer uh, into a briefcase 3D printer similar to ben Benjamin Heckendorn's portable 3D printer. Uh, what you have here is the X motor bracket, the idler bracket, uh, the X carriage, and the uh, nozzle mounts, uh, the front and back. The only difference between the front and back is on the, the corners uh, where the bolt holes go. One has the recess for the nut and the other is uh, has a whole recess for the head of the uh, screws. So uh, with the way I have redesigned this to fit inside the box, uh, the threaded rod had to be over the, mo uh, the Z motors, which uh, is closer to the edge of the box on the outside. Uh, so I had to move that uh, to to this side and move uh, the portion where the uh, smooth rods go uh, on the other side. And then I had to flatten this side over here. I pretty much modified everything here except for the idler cover. Uh, that's uh, I reused the the same basic. Uh, shape of this box right here uh, so that cover didn't have to be modified at all uh, so I just reused it as it is basically all I did was flip the smooth rod bracket and the uh, threaded rod uh, bracket where your nut gets recessed in there all I did was flip those around and move that uh, motor mount uh, over on those and then I didn't like this design being in three different pieces so I made a front and a back. Uh, I'm still not done with this because uh, with the new uh, Prusa Mendel i3 Mark II uh, he's, it is being upgraded with as a one nozzle system with at least uh, up to four extruders and so I can switch this around and remove about half of it later now this is going to change the internal uh, dynamics of what I have uh, remodeled this as so uh, I'll do a work around uh, when it comes time for that but as it stands I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, four mounting point system so this is what I have up here as my uh, final design right now uh, th this is what I'm currently going to be using so the uh, start out with the X carriage since everybody's been using the hot iron method to melt and recess the nuts uh, for their cases uh, I went ahead and decided to go ahead and use that so I'm not designing a front and a back with this one with the head recessed and one with the nut recessed so all I'm going to do is uh, heat up the nut with a soldering pin and push it in there. This will create that hexagon shape that you're going to be looking for. The way I remodeled this was I pretty much split in half what was started out with this. So all I've got is the uh, half of the recess hole for the LM8 UU bearings uh, on this half 
so let's go ahead and, and go back up here and look see what I have so what I have here is one half and this gets doubled in uh, both directions and its final assembly will look like this with the two halves put together so on one half it has a recess on either side for the Elemate UU bearing uh, it wasn't capped off on the original so I went ahead and capped it off so that the bearing can't slip out uh, I haven't had any trouble with that but it seemed like a possibility along with the uh, lower Elemate UU bearing it is now a uh, captive inside the the bottom right there the original design had it resting on top of it which I don't know how it stayed on there but it seemed to stay on there just fine so I also redesigned this to hold the X belt tensioners now the way this system works is that you have uh, one short piece of belt right here the teeth facing up and one end of your belt with your teeth facing down uh, going uh, through this channel of the X carriage through the X idle bearing uh, carriage all the way to the motor mount uh, and around the pulley for it and back into this one right here with the opposite direction. Uh, it's the same piece just turned in the opposite direction. So you have that short piece of uh, belt down here. Or you can double it over at the tip. Now this channel, uh, this specific channel uh, from this end to this end is meant to fit the bolt that I'm going to be using. So the head of the bolt is going to be over here and the threads will be sticking out over here. So uh, you would need the, the bolt going all the way through both of these. Now that doesn't give you a whole lot of uh, wiggle room to tighten, but that does create it so that it won't slip back and forth uh, inside that. Uh, it gives it that uh, start and stop point so that there's there's no slippage in there uh, no matter how close together or far apart these get so it has the two channels uh, one with the belt coming up here and one with the belt coming down here so the, these are to be mounted first uh, well uh, first uh, you put the motor end the idle end uh, together along with the bearings in the middle on the th uh, smooth rods uh, you feed your belt through and you tighten it down uh, snug and then you put your uh, X carriage uh, hot end mounts bolted on there on either side and since uh, the way that this is designed it would be uh, taking the the entire X carriage off would be labor intensive uh, I wanted it to be as simple as possible to, to be able to upgrade this because I've got different plans for this particular uh, X carriage. Uh, I, I got more than more plans for this other than just a uh, four nozzle mount system or one nozzle mount system. Uh, you know, if, if you wanted to mount your uh, fans onto this, then, uh, you know, it, or if you're printing ABS like me, you won't be using fans hardly any at all any of the time but I, I do want it available to be upgraded so that that's the simplest way to do it was to make this a two-part system bolted around the the entire frame now since this is using the rep rep pro Mendel uh, design now I had to uh, go in and take this section right here uh, that that's the recess portion of the I guess bushings that get fed in there so I needed this to be just a little bit wider so all I did was uh, s 
scale it in the X direction and then moved it in the Y direction. So that made it uh, larger for the I guess bushings that I was using. I didn't need to go through and cut another hole for it. The motor itself, in order to get everything to fit, I had to turn it about 45 degrees uh, one way and actually put one of these screws behind that threaded rod. So uh, I've never had a trouble with the motors and for one of them burning out so I didn't expect any need to take this apart or even take that motor off so that's going that one mounting screw is going to be behind the z-axis threaded rod but in a nutshell that's basically what uh, the, di the differences that I have made uh, for this 3D printer now so far this section right here is actually uh, is what is setting the depth of the briefcase 3D printer this is the f furthest point for it because the motor for the uh, z-axis is this wide and center centering it over the lead screw hole now uh, alright so far the width of this is up here and then the boxes around this Z motor uh, stepper motor so in so far the box for the this 3d printer goes from this side of this motor to the back side of this motor uh, I've got larger parts besides these two uh, that is actually setting the depth even further but so far this is what is uh, setting that so far this is what is what setting that uh, the uh, thickness of the briefcase so this is how I measure things alright so far the depth of this uh, 3d printer is going to be approximately 87 or 88 millimeters just based off of the available room from these two stepper motors so this is all that I uh, have got modified so far for this and it's time for th uh, 3D printing these pieces uh, then comes assembly and then I'll move on to the z-axis thank you for watching
and we're back it's time for assembly uh, before I assemble this I gotta prep all the parts by reaming out all the holes so take an 8 millimeter drill bit for the large holes and a 3 millimeter bit for the smaller holes now the Igus bushings fit perfectly uh, I'm glad that I changed the file just that little bit and widen that uh, collar part the 8 millimeter smooth rods uh, slip slip right in and everything's still perfectly straight. I may need to tweak the tolerances just a little bit that way uh, it might get a little bit tighter, a little bit, little bit more snug and just use lubricant to uh, to allow it to slip in uh, uh, smoothly rather than uh, the space. Now it takes two of the LM8 UU bearings on the top and one on the bottom just like the previous version of the RepRap Pro Mendel tricolor. Now the gearing on the NEMA 17 motor, I needed the uh, it to be lined up closer to towards the motor. That way, when you look through the channels of that motor end, you can actually see the gearing. That way, the belts all line up perfectly for that. So getting the motor in tight and now it's time for the uh, belt uh, to be put on. Now I cut this belt ahead of time so it's the right length but you put uh, the belt in through the smaller end of the belt tensioner and then you attach that small smaller piece to it and help it keep, uh, help keep it in place. Uh, alternatively I didn't think of this until uh, recently that you can leave the belt a little bit long and just fold the end of it over and that should be uh, uh, probably even a little better because it creates a little bit more uh, tension on the inside of that for it to hold in place. So putting the bearing in and the cover and putting a lock a nylock nut on the back of it that way you can pull it through otherwise pulling just pulling on the belt it catch on some of the uh, corners and with that gearing on there you can just pull it through on the motor end so just like that first end put the belt in first put that small piece of belt and put your bolt through now I had a little bit of a hard time trying to get this nut on here uh, with that belt uh, it is pushes up kind of right against the nut at least one of the sides of the nut and it uh, prevents you from being able to turn it by itself so I had to turn the bolt in order to to uh, tighten it down as you can see I'm kind of fighting with it but eventually it goes on there and I'm able to tighten it up just fine. Now you don't want to get that too tight otherwise you're going to be putting undue friction on uh, one end and then you'll have to tune your motors up too high and probably burn something up. But my X carriage printed just fine. Uh, you had to use supports for it and I had to uh, double check make sure that all the supports were cleaned off. That way the LM8 UU bearings fit snugly inside that without uh, without creating any uh, extra fr friction on it. Now I chose not to recess the nuts with a soldering pen like I said it would be a good idea. Uh, I found that the plastic I was using was soft enough that uh, as I tightened the nut down that it just recessed itself into the hole. But that's all it takes for the X carriage. Thanks for watching.